Hello! Today I'd like to talk about the use of Substance Painter in creating medical scenes. Scenes for game engines and GPU render engines benefit from this workflow. So to start a new project, we're going to go to New and then Browse to the model file that we'd like to use. And it's important that this model have non-overlapping UVs so that when we go to bake these specialized mesh maps the program needs, that those maps bake correctly. And in this case, I'm just using the default maps. You can add other maps like subsurface scattering or displacement, um, whatever else you'd like to use. So one of the many things I like to do in Substance Painter is to leverage this thickness map. And here we see a preview of it. Um, we can also look in our uh, combined 2D, 3D view, which this is what the model looks like unwrapped. And I'll just go back to the 3D only view. And what I want to use this map for in this case is to actually make these tips white. So the way I would go about this is to, um, here's our normal material, is to make a fill layer and typically I'll make this my base color and we can make this color something that's recognizable like maybe a dark purple or something a little lighter for the people to see, maybe even a blue color. Hopefully that records and compresses well. And then we're going to make our tips yellow. So I could uh, make another fill layer here or just select this layer and hit Control D and change the color to a yellow. And I'll call it tips. So in this, to mask this tips layer, we can either click up here on the add mask layer or button or we can just right click on this and say add a mask and you know when right clicking on here to add the mask we have a choice of generator paint fill levels so we have a lot of choices in here but I'm just going to add a black mask and into this black mask now that is created we have these options of other things we can add into the mask so there's lots of layers of addition here and blending, lots of options, and it's very powerful. And in this case, I'm going to add a fill layer. And here's our fill. It's in our mask. It's gray, so it's half masked out. And it has some parameters in here, like UV mapping parameters you can change, tiling that you could change. In this case, I'm going to leave that alone. And into the grayscale channel, I'm going to put in my thickness map and it is working as expected and we know that we need to invert this and the way this works is like Photoshop layers is we'll add an invert on top and to do that we go into our add filter and a deeper layer here is what filter we can choose we click on here and there's many filters we can choose the one we're looking for is the invert and we can filter for the filter by typing I-N-V-E-R and it narrows it down to our invert. Now this is behaving as we had hoped it would. Um, we can get a clearer view of what's happening in this window if we isolate it down to just the color instead of um, seeing everything together in the material. So I'm going to turn on base color and we get a little clearer view of actually what's happening here. And with this we can further refine this map by adding a, in this case, a levels. And now that the levels will be acting on the black and white mask, um, we can use it just like you would a levels in, in Photoshop. And you can see what happens when we do this with our levels. And to even further refine this effect here because it's a little bit uh, noisy here and add another filter 
we can add by getting rid of our search criteria a blur filter so the nice thing about this is that all these are uh, procedural in a way that we can change our colors later on if I go back into our, our material view um, say I don't like my base color and uh, you know I want to change it to uh, purple I want to make it darker and you know maybe this effect is, is just too much with these levels so we can come back in here and and really adjust these these effects and another way of adding in the uh, inputs of these maps onto our model uh, without using necessarily a fill layer and a mask is to use the the paint layer now this paint layer has uh, no ability really to level in to put in all of these blending into the mask but what it does have is just in the color channel itself because there's no mask here yet is you can actually add a fill into this paints color channel and if you want to you know turn off everything except for the color then we can put in our let's do ambient occlusion and there's our ambient occlusion and you know in a similar process to what we did last time we can add on top of this a levels and adjust our amount of ambient occlusion that we're getting in here and we can also um, again add a filter and we're choosing in this case what the filter affects I'll just say to the color and I can put a blur and we can blur out our, our ambient occlusion I mean there are limitations here you can see this the seam edge isn't too happy about this um, and when I'm when I say that it's a better view if we go to the 2d 3d view and these edges of the model are not blurring as well as I would hope that they would so that's something to look out for um, and now that we have just our paint layer um, with nothing in it except for these other uh, nodes that get added you know, we could put this onto like a multiply um, and there's a lot of things there's a lot of power in here um, if we turn it back into normal we can add on top of all this stuff uh, we can add a, a gradient to colorize this uh, I do believe it's in a filter and I'm just gonna put it into the color and I'm gonna go for uh, a gradient and here it is right here and this is the way the gradient set up and we can shift where the the position of the gradient happens in here which is pretty cool um, that's a nice level of control and of course we can colorize our our gradient and we can even further add more colors into our gradient with this color quantity control it gives us a little more fine control over the gradient and I'll turn this into a multiply and here we can see the ambient occlusion is colorized and on top of our base color and to keep building this um, I would maybe add some medium sized bumps to this and say I want these spots to be maybe a little bit smaller we can do something like this we can work with our contrast and another thing that we can do if we don't like these bumps being down on these crevices here is we can take this layer make a folder put it inside of our folder and then into this folder make another mask say so add a black mask and then start using our smart masks and 
uh, I think I'll start out with the top one, the cavity rust, and put it into the mask. And this is putting the white spots exactly where I, the opposite of where I want them. So I'm going to hit this mask editor and go up here and turn on a global invert. So now these white spots are only on the outside curvature of the material. But there's there's a lot uh, there's a lot of control and power in the program. Um, just kind of scratching the surface here. Uh, and once you're happy with uh, the look of your model, uh, you can come into here and say export your textures. And the nice thing about Painter is that it uh, comes with a lot of preset configurations for different render engines. So Unreal here. It has it all set up to export the, the maps that you'll need, uh, Redshift, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And um, I was also able to make my own Unity lightweight render pipeline, now called Universal Pipeline uh, presets in here. So that's a, that's a top level overview of cool things in uh, Substance Painter.